tow in. He has that ability to maybe hold that anode power and also steer the bike in very nasty conditions and uh, possibly put more torque out to the cranks in, in those nasty conditions. Whereas I think when you look at Ryan and, and the way he rides, he's actually very, very powerful, high top end um, the cross racing that he does. There's a lot of accelerations up to speed and then deaccelerated and up to speed. So that maximal power comes in handy when you're doing that. And I think if you asked any of his competitors, that's probably what they fear the most.
he's, he's only at 90 degrees right here, but I'm already getting a pretty significant amount of resistance from his hip musculature because it's huge and it's very strong. Now, we do that same thing to Ryan, and he actually gets more flexibility right there because his, his hip musculature itself, when you take the hamstrings out of the, out of the equation, is relatively flexible compared to Adam. So it's kind of counterintuitive when you see him do a forward bend, but looking at them passively, you see his hips are flexible, his hamstrings are not, and vice versa on Adam. Now, with a back bend on Adam, he, gets, he has pretty big flexibility through his spine. He, gets, he has a lot of range of motion right there. It's not a bad thing. You look at Ryan do it, he gets okay, but it's pretty limited. Like, I don't know, I don't know how to quantify that, but it's pretty visibly different that he can't go nearly as far for it's probably coming some from how intensely strong and taut his abdominal muscles are. When I say that, I don't necessarily mean the good abdominal muscles. I mean ones that you can be strong in your abs and have it be a detrimental thing. He's, if you're in a bike position all the time, your rectus abdominis gets relatively shortened and it can be strong in that position, but not in any other position. He's trying to lengthen it here and he's pretty much unable. Adam has huge abdominal muscles and strength there, but it's but it's relatively flexible, so he can actually bend back and get elongation through his rectus abdominis, so. Now, like, we see asymmetries in people's musculoskeletal systems all the time on the bike, and it doesn't always matter. Um, I want you just to, just to point out, this is Adam. He's not thinking about anything, he's just laying there, he's fine. His right leg, you can see how much external rotation he has through his hip is probably a good 15 degrees farther than his left leg. He has differences in leg length as well, subtle ones, but this is demonstrating his, his passive mobility of his hip really isn't different. It's not like he has 15 degrees more range of motion in this hip than he does in this one. His, the musculature of his deep hip is just somewhat more activated on this side at rest than on this leg, and that affects how the muscles of his hip actually fire. He never has injuries, but he is asymm asymmetrical. If, if somebody with less core strength were to have an asymmetry like this, it may be provocative to back problems or hip problems, anything. Ryan is actually pretty symmetrical and doesn't seem to have problems like this, but he still has other injuries. So here's Adam on a spin scan here. So this is just looking at kind of the torque output. He's putting out like 250 watts right here. You can see this is his left leg from the center of the red bars over to the left, and this is his right leg. You see more power on his right leg through this area than you do on his left leg. This is, that's basically right as he's coming over the top. Now, we can theorize that that's coming either from having a longer leg on the left side, that's un it's going through more range of motion as it goes over the top and it's unable to develop power there, or you can theorize that it's coming from a difference in the strength characteristics of his hip. Um, it's probably coming from both, really. Um, does that really matter? Um, I don't know. You, you'd probably see that he's better at cornering to one side than another. I mean, most people are, but when you have an asymmetry like this, it's probably pretty noticeable, your ability to kind of load that leg. He might feel it in corners. But he's also really good at cornering, so it probably doesn't matter at all. Much at all. Um, <laughs> like, when we test people functionally and look at their strength and balance, I expect it to have an, uh, an impact on their ability to handle technical sections, things that are difficult to kind of uh, adjust to. Now, like pedaling and cornering don't really use necessarily the same muscle grooves. And what people do off the bike really affects the way that they use musculature in general. 